My question here is, how old do you think we... Who uh, built that intro? Was that you, Roy? It's definitely Chris. That's definitely Chris. Chris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thinks we are from the late 1800s. <laughs> that's, a, that's, that's a nice bit of shade he threw there. I would right. just besmirch my elders like that. Mm -hmm. All righty. Well, welcome everyone to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. And today we're doing a list that's already been done by some of the folks in the Dice Tower. But a list that I'm very excited about doing in the top 10 games we wish existed when we were teenagers. This was a really fun list for me to put together. This was a hard list for me to put together. That doesn't mean not fun. I think it's a great topic. I think it's Do you really mean narrowing neat. it down. No, like how to approach it. And so I approached it kind of in a mishmash of ways. And I could talk a little bit about why they're on there when I do them. But I have to, you know, when I was a teenager, I wasn't really familiar with modern games. And so I was coming at it from that point of view. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's hard for me to, to say, like, these are the things I appreciate now, somebody who's been in the hobby for, you know, over a decade. And, and, but at that point, I had a very different mindset, you know? So I really tried to look at it as, what are things I think I would have liked then? You know what I mean? I did a very similar thing. I had a very hard time putting this list together, <clears throat> too. And it was finding the games. Yeah, not mm. narrowing it down. It's yeah. considering... What would I have liked? Mm -hmm. What am I projecting, though? Like, what do I right. like now that I'm going, oh, yeah, definitely would have liked that as a teenager. And caught myself a couple of times going, that's not, uh, that's not true. Like, yeah. I would not have liked that. I would have run away from that <laughs> game screaming because it's too complicated, because yeah. of whatever, usually because it's too complicated. I right. think it's because I played more games than you. I mean, like, I know exactly what I like because I was playing games. Yes, as right. A so it's a little yeah, different. Yeah, that's true. I think um, I came into them a little later, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I think for me, what I did was there's two main things I focused on. One, kind of the obvious one, more time, right? Mm -hmm. Having more time as a teenager yes. than you do now. The other one was a little trickier, and that was games that if I had then, and none of my, you know, deep bench of knowledge of games that I have now, I would have enjoyed very much then without going, this is like this other thing, but not as good. Mamava, snob. You know what I mean? So I put a lot of games on the list that I think are very interesting, very innovative, just fun. No pretentiousness, just fun. That now I play and I go, yeah, it's all right. You know, the the one thing I did come back to over and over again, and this is going to sound stupid, maybe this is a me thing, but I remember growing up and, and teenage years and, and younger even, when they used to advertise board games on commercials on mm -hmm. TV. Right. And Scott so I was, thinking, I was thinking, what would the commercials for these games have been like and would they have drawn me in? That's when I was like, oh, man, I can imagine what this commercial would have been like. I'd have been all over that. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's a good call. I like you know? that. I like that. All right, well, let's see what <clears> happens. <throat> uh, here we go. All right, so my number 10 is a game that the first time I played it as an adult, you know, because it's a relatively recent game, it evoked memories of being at school and playing on the carom boards. Okay. So this is a dexterity game, and to me it feels like the type of game that you might have played out on the schoolyard, but on your table talk. My number 10 is Clask. Yeah, okay. This is, a game, <laughs> th this is the type of game that I loved as a kid, but I didn't have access to something like this at home, right? You had to play stuff like this, either like air hockey, at a, an arcade or something like that, or again, at school, the carom boards that you'd play at recess or lunch or whatever. And so this gave me that vibe. If I had seen this as a teenager, I would have been all over this, playing this with my friends, having tournaments, trash talking, mm. all that type of stuff. So this is a game that kind of evokes, it makes me feel like a kid now when I'm playing it, I guess is another way of looking at it. Class, you know it I mean? makes you younger. Put your hand under the table. That's right. That's, that's right. What it says. Fear yeah. is the mind killer. Um, I I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I made a quote that's actually on the box. Mike. Oh, okay. Well, they should have used mine, but that's all right. Maybe there was a they copyright issue. So there might be copyright issues on that. Um, yeah, Clask was. Uh, that's you know, a good call. <coughs> I like this pick. Yeah, just kind of. And I thought you know more dexterity-ish type things. Those are things that I was drawn to as a kid. Sure. Like heavy toy factor. Yeah. You know. There's my number ten. All right. Clask. So all this right. is. Oh, I'm. I'm gonna guess this is the only. A game of this kind on your list? Actually, no. Oh, okay, interesting. No. All right. There's another mm. one that I think is in the ballpark of then this. Then I one. won't ask any more questions. Okay. Okay. 
My number 10 also has a heavy toy factory in many ways. A lot of table presence really is what mm. it is. And it's a game that, again, right now I consider to be okay. But I think as a teenager, I would have been all over it. And that yeah. is Colt Express. Okay. Colt Express has that train out on the table. Yep. You are messing with each other. You're playing cards. You're stealing loot, shooting guys, running across the top of the, the train. Yeah. The whole thing is vibrant. It's youthful, which, again, is something I kind of try to to find in these games and, and think to myself, is there, is there something joyful and youthful about the game? Mm -hmm. I think Colt Express has that, you know? It does. For me... I started looking at mechanisms now, and I'm like, well, you know, there's better simultaneous selection uh, or, or programming games that I like better than this. Yes, that's true. But, man, I would have had a blast with this, like, shoot them up, cowboys on the train, or robbers, I guess is what you are, on the train. Cowboy robber. Cowboy yeah, robbers. Yeah, yeah, Gentleman yeah. cowboy robber. Of mm -hmm. course, with the illustrious Sir. mustache. That's right. So, yeah, Colt Express for me, again, packs a lot of that. Fun that I was trying to to nail for this list specifically. That's number ten. It's a good call. My number ten actually is the only game on the list that actually came out when I was a teenager. I was turn. It was between eighteen and nineteen, and I don't even. I don't consider that counting. I was Not busy really, in college, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and I didn't have a chance to get it until years later. And I don't care that a lot of people don't like this game. I'm. I would have gone crazy as a teenager over this, and that's Magic the Gathering. Magic the oh, Gathering. Wow. And by the way, this is going to throw some of you off because some of you are like, I did put it as a teenager. We're a little older than some of y'all, <laughs> probably. Yes. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Mad. The idea of collecting cards, and I would have turned into aluminum cans. I would have <laughs> worked and shoveled snow and mowed lawns and done whatever to buy a few packs. I know sure. I would have. This. It's probably good. This. <laughs> didn't exist as a teenager because yeah, I would have yeah, spent yeah. all my money on you it. You would have developed the work ethic <laughs> in Epic if you yeah, had been true. out when you were a I would have, I, I would have spent hours making decks. Yeah. I mean, that's, this, would, this would have consumed my life. I, I know where I was because I was already doing this with the, game, you know, the few games that, I, that did have this, like uh, Hero Quest was out, and so I would mm. sit down and I would make weapons and draw scenarios and do all kinds of stuff. I, that's, I just had all this time, right? Yeah. This, I would have just played this. I would have wrangled in all my friends. Of course, I, w I had a couple rich kid friends, and they would have bought decks and made me cry, but I would have still <laughs> tried, you know? <laughs> I would have tried really weird decks to beat them. Sure. Uh, man. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. And I know some people are like, that wouldn't have been good for you, and that's maybe true, but I also ate candy as a teenager, so whatever. Yeah, well. I want to play Magic Gathering. I want to go back in time. You um, can play Magic the Gathering now, though. You can. I can. I can. But You're I also don't... going to have candy now. I don't have the... Mm. So Magic the Gathering to me now is something I enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but it's it's a very side thing. I get a deck, I play it, mm -hmm. I'll mess with it a little bit. I just don't have the time to put the That's what it super is. energy into it right. yes, that I see yes, yes. teenagers at our local store doing. Yes. They as do a, that. It does seem like as a teenager, and that's another thing, you could have been a lifestyle gamer. Right. Whereas now as adults, a lot, I know a lot of people do that, and mm -hmm. that's great. Uh, we find it a little harder to do yes. that, to have a game, never mind because of our profession, but right. just to do that with the availability of time. Um, so yeah, anything that's a lifestyle game is just a solid pick for this yeah, list. It's true. I also think that I would have met some friends through doing this. I don't know if they would have been yeah. good friends or not. Yes. I think I would have met people by playing this because this creates community. It really does. Oh, yeah. Uh, my mom would have hated every single one of them, <laughs> Yeah. but I would have met them. Anyway, my number 10, Magic the Gathering. My number nine is a... It's, it's definitely not the first game many people will think of in this genre of kind of like big mini die rolling on a map battling type games. So I was originally thinking of some other ones like, you know, Cthulhu Wars or whatever. And I'm like, you know what? That would have scared me off as a teenager. I think that would have been maybe a little bit too much, it, it, too complex, it would, I would, too many things that I would have been unfamiliar with. Yes. And so I instead chose a game called Gatefall, which is <laughs> huge oh, wow. plastic toys, right? Huge. You can't even. You shouldn't really call them miniatures. These are gigantic plastic toys. This is Barbie the War Game. Yes, that you put on a map, and it has a very simple 
card and die system that I would say is less complex than some Milton Bradley or Mattel games that I've yes. played. Right? It is very simple, but it has that kind of anachronistic, you know, uh, you know, wasteland characters, post-apocalyptic versus fantasy characters. I'd have been all over that. And these toys, which is what they are, would have been, I, I, can you imagine the commercial for this? What they could have Gateful. done? <laughs> there would have been a I mean? cartoon, the guy would have pulled up on the bike. The kids wearing the leather jacket 100%, on his side. hundred yeah, percent, right? A hundred percent. A guy rolling in on the motorcycle. You know, th this is the game that I was like, you know what, for this style of game, this is the one that probably would have attracted me most as a teenager. That's a Very call. simple, huge toy factor. You know, this kind of the, 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 the factions that are very easy to understand. You know, uh, you know, almost almost generic, but although they, I think they handle it in a non-generic way here. Um, yeah, this is one I think that would have been super appealing to me mm. as a teenager. So, Gatefall is my number nine. I like it. I just realized I, like I, there's, I don't think there's any crossover on this list. We'll see. Probably there may not, not be. Yeah, because we all were different teenagers. They yes. were cool. I was not. <laughs> my number nine is one of the big ones on my list. And again, it's that time idea, that idea of mm. being able to spend a lot of time of investing in something rich and laden with stories, and that is Sleeping Gods. Whoa! Sleeping Gods. As a teenager, I could have played this with yeah. any varying number of people also, which certainly would have helped, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but yeah, just the amount of story and content that is in there, this could have easily been that kind of lifestyle game for me in, around that age, where this is just this is what I play. Mm -hmm. And I go through it, and I go through it again, and I can leave it set up somewhere and spend hours messing around with it, and, oh, I'm going to go explore over here and whatever. Making notes. Making and, notes, yeah, yeah keeping yeah. that stuff, you know. That's true. Yeah. Writing notes down about a game. That yeah, was big yeah. back so then, it's, right? it's kind of like we used to do with, like, video games, you yeah. know, writing down codes and stuff. Or like Zelda, game. writing down where you found the thing. So yeah. That, yeah, 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 right. So writing, charting maps and stuff. This feels very much, in in some ways, considering it from that uh, you know um, teenager point of view, like a video game world, mm -hmm. an adventure world in which you do many of those same things: combat and nodes and charting and mm -hmm. finding things. So yeah, Sleeping Gods for me, it's it's it, I still think it's fantastic. Now, I still playing now. Just don't have the time for these sure. many hour campaigns. But boy, I could have sunk some time into this <laughs> as a teenager, yeah. All right, my number nine is this. It's, well, all my games are going to be in the same vein. Games I would have just dove into. It's a game that now I'm like, oh, it's a lot of rules. I like the whole idea of the game, but it's mm -hmm. a lot of rules, takes up space. But man, now I would just jump all over. I mean, back then I would have jumped all over, and that's Battle Stations. So oh, if you've never yeah. heard of Battle Stations, Battle Stations is kind of a two-part game. Uh, you have a spaceship that you get out a map on and you fly around and shoot at other spaceships. But the, here's the picture of the other half of the game. This is your spaceship. Mm. You build up your spaceship and then and aliens will land on your spaceship, or you are all aliens. There's all kinds of you know different weird races in this one. They land on yours, or you land on theirs. And then you're running around a spaceship shooting at each other. And there's like a 100-page role-playing guide that comes with it in a sense wow. that you have stats for all the different characters. <clears throat> and it's a lot to handle now as an adult. I'm like, okay, i got to keep track of the ships on the board. And then we set out a, you know, a pod with two guys that are going to land on this ship and they're going to fight over here. That's, now I'm just like, oh, it sounds exhausting. As a kid, I've been like, yes, <laughs> what else is there? Mm. This is as close to a role-playing game as a board game can get. In fact, it's like half role-playing. Yeah. But hmm. man, I would have built ships. I would have written out new rules. I would have broken stories for it. Fan I would have fiction. <laughs> I think fan fiction has a connotation. I won't. I don't want to get into. Um, but yeah, I, I just thought it was. It's just such a neat game. And now I look at it I'm like, oh, I would. I come back, teenage Tom Vassell. You'll mm -hmm. love it. So that's Battle Stations. He's within you, Tom. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, a few moments ago when I was talking about class, as my number 10, you said, is that this is going to be like the last of this type of game? I said, no, there's one more I think is in the same... You remember, Mike, we yeah, were yeah. here. Yeah, Pepperidge like... Farm remembers. <laughs> Six um, minutes ago. My, my number eight is um, uh, Tumbling Dice. I think that this is a game that I would have been all over as a teenager, grabbing huge 
handfuls of dice and, and yeah. the, the the it's just such a simple concept it has a huge toy factor um you know i think that as a teenager i was more into <laughs> I wonder it, yeah. who set this is <laughs> right 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 this is yeah, not this a standard isn't really this is not representative of no. uh, what this game looks it's like. It's representative of, of the library, the, the Dice Tower Library. Yeah, yeah, it's um, very different. So, uh, Which you can check out if you come to one of our conventions. Anyway, um, Tumbling Dice I'd have been all over, right? I mean, I, I still love it. I still think it's great for what it is. Um, but as a teenager, I would have been like... I would have played this for hours. Yeah, I would have played it for hours. Trying to get best, you know, get, get, get really good at it. Trying little, like... The, the you know backflips, trick shots, and all that uh, kind of that's stuff. That's true for money at lunch uh, at the school. Hundred percent. That's okay. right. I would have I would have absolutely what? been expelled for gambling at school. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, look, I don't what? care. Kids get what's school time. You never played quarters, where you throw the quarters to the wall, no. and whoever's quarters the closest without touching the wall wins all the money that's yes. thrown. Nope. Definitely played that. You never played bloody knuckles. Maybe, but that's not. <laughs> that wasn't for money. That was for yeah. ER that was bills. for like stupidity. <laughs> that was for stupidity. Breaking pencils. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that type same yeah, thing. Yeah, but that wasn't thing. for money. Honestly, yeah. this whole genre I know appeals to teenagers because it appeals to teenagers today. A hundred percent. You bring out crokinole. You bring yes. out whatever ice cool, whatever these yeah, games are. Those they games work. I think are especially appealing to that age group, right? Gosh, this is like all those YouTube videos of somebody like. Tossing a ping pong ball right across like a room and having it yep. go bing boom boom the, the, the land or something stuff. like yep. all that trick shot stuff. Yes, Th this is that. Yeah. Like it's kind of like that. So I get mm -hmm. it. I get yep. it. That's my number eight. Those are such good picks, Mike. Ooh, I, nice. I hate that your picks are so much better than my picks. Mm, I hate that too. Not to speak of Tom's picks. <laughs> my picks are accurate, hundred percent. Okay, they're accurate. I went saying? back in time and talked to <laughs> teenage Tom Basil and he said these are the games he wanted. How did he say it? Here we go. It was a much higher pitched voice. Hello, like, yeah. Tom. No, it was more like yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> nasally, nasally, <laughs> nasally Tom. nerd. All right, uh, my number eight is a very nerdy game uh, with a lot of different themes, and I'm sure again that I feel like I was more forgiving of bizarre crossover anachronistic stuff mm -hmm. as a teenager. This is Smash Up. Okay, yeah, I can see that. I think Smash Ooh, Up. I didn't even think of this one. As a teenager, man, I got aliens yeah, yeah. and pirates and dinosaurs right. and robots and all sorts of crazy stuff. And then, of course, uh, all the extras, which mm -hmm. uh, in my made-up fantasy world here, came out too. Yeah. And you, you know, you end up with the bigger, geekier box with a billion of these things. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I would have been all over this. Yeah, things yeah. that bother me now, I don't think would have bothered me then. Mm -hmm. Things like, oh, the game is best at three. What? No. A max player count. I no, no, no. <laughs> I, as a teenager, I would have found ways to double the player count. Sure. Yeah, I'd man. Like, I think we could put this with eight. <laughs> yeah, right. Come on. We could yeah. do it. 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's just a fun theme. The game has a bit of a learning curve as you, like, learn all the things. But I think, again, as a teenager, having access to this game and pretty mm -hmm. much nothing else, man, you'd know the decks. You'd learn the stuff. You'd know what the card just by the name does, you know? You'd yeah. get into it. Right. So, yeah, smash up for me, my number eight. Yeah, it's a good, 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 good pick. You it's like a good that pick. one? It's a good pick. I like both of your picks. This is weird. We get out too many compliments <laughs> on this list. What are, you, what are you going with? My number eight is, so I have it, as a kid, I always wanted the game that I could play with anybody. Like, my parents had no interest for my first two games. Sure. Not only would they not have liked them, they would have probably been actively opposed to them. <laughs> right. Um, but this... You know, when I was a kid, I found, I found Scotland Yard, and I was like, oh, I wanted my parents to play games with me. I just, I like that concept. This is one I could have got them to play, and I would have played it at all the family gatherings, and that's Formula D, or Formula right. Day. Okay. Um, Formula D is a really good racing game. I would have been crazy enamored with those dice. Yeah. I, I know this because I was the first time I saw these <laughs> dice. I was like, what on earth are these dice? <laughs> yeah. It's a 30-sided die. I've never seen that. It's not even 1 through 30. Are you allowed to print the same number on a die? Because that didn't it's exist. Yeah, right, no, it's right, insane. Right. Yeah. And and then the tracks, and I think my dad would have got into it because it's racing, sure, right? It's my mom would have played, and my brothers and sisters, and we would have had a good time, and it would have taken a long time to go around the track, and everyone mm. had fun. And I could see this being like my family's game for a while. I could see that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a good call. And then I would have drawn out tracks on poster board. Right. I would have, and I would have made new tracks. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, it's such a relatable thing, right? I mean, every, it's easy to who's get not going to be comfortable with car racing? Yeah, you, know yeah, you I mean? get it. So, you get it, yeah. Yeah, this one, this would have been my family game as a teenager. Formula D. I like it. All 
All right, Z, so this is my version of um, Colt Express, basically. Okay, right. Same thing where there are better games of this type that I would play now, but as a teenager, Camel Up, oh my gosh. Oh, I'd have been yeah, yeah, over yeah. the moon with this game. More gambling. Yeah, it's all yeah. I don't want to say that, uh, you know. I Mike, Mike Brad's my illicit. Casinos. <laughs> Look, as a teenager, yeah, yeah, he was. The uh, high school years were a little bit of a of a, of a lost time for me. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I just would have been all over this with the with the the pyramid in the middle and, and you're pressing the pyramid for the dice and the stacking of the camels and all. I mean, this has a huge toy factor. It's also very simple. It's also extremely interactive. It leads to kind of like trash talking and cheering, yeah. which was especially the kind of thing that at that age you kind of would do, you know, even more so than now, I think. Um, so yeah, when you were talking about Colt Express, though what you express probably much better than I am right now is why Camel Up, I think, would have appealed to me. You know what I, I mean? I think the big plastic, any big plastic yeah. chunky thing, though, immediately takes me to, like, teenager, yes. maybe younger even. Mm -hmm. like. Any game that has a giant central thing, yep. and it's, again, in, in this <laughs> illusion, it's a plastic thing, yes. not a cardboard thing. No, no, plastic. Like, mine was a cardboard thing. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's like, oh, it's a giant palm tree, and you right. press it, and right. coconuts fall it's off a of it. It's Something stupid it's a, like yeah, that, yeah. and you're right. like, yo, teenagers. Mm -hmm. 100%. You know, teenage years, yes, yep. absolutely. That's no, that's a good seven. call. Camelot. That's a good call. All right, my number seven is... Again, it's just a game that I overlook a lot these days, but I love the look, I like the theme, and it's a cooperative game, which I think, again, I would have been like, wow, this is so cool. Uh, and it's a very, it's the artwork, the illustrations, it's a, it's a neat looking game. This is Samurai Spirit. Samurai oh, wow. Spirit huh. is, huh. you have your samurai, you're defending a village from a lot of people who are invading it, but if you take enough hits, you go into beast mode mm -hmm. in this game. And you take your chart, your little character in front of you, you flip it over, and you are now your same character, your samurai, who bam, just became a bear, or <laughs> right. a wolf, or a tiger, mm -hmm. or something crazy like that. You're beefier, you're harder to kill. And you are just defending this little village. It's very rules light. There's some push your lug, there's a little messing with each other. Very cooperative, and again, and thinking then, like right now, I'm like, cooperative games are a dime a dozen, mm -hmm. man. Every other game is a cooperative game right yeah, now. Yeah. I mean, how often does that question come up? Every time you look at a game you're like, and someone's teaching you, yep. co-op or... Oh, right, right, right. We never, that's not a thing you used to have to ask no. whatsoever. No, So this, I think, would have been one I would have really appreciated because of the look, the vibe, the style of it. And co-op would have put it just way over the top. Hmm. So I almost wonder, like, this is a hard thing for me to imagine what my teenage self would have thought of co-ops. Yeah. Would I have liked them? Yeah. Adventure games, yes. I, I, like an adventure, go through the adventure, yes. A game like this, I wonder. I guess I would have. I mean, I would have been. I was playing anything. You yeah. Know? I'm gonna tell you, I have not yet had a co-op, but I will. Yeah. On I, my I, list. I, I think I would have loved, loved the idea of co-op games. Yeah. Because I know I did. You know, yeah, like yeah. When I, I was in I college, have, I played... According to my list, I think I would have yeah. too. Yeah. And I was in college, I played Pandemic. I remember getting it very early, like the mm. week it came out. And I was like immediately floored. Yeah. So, yeah. That's my number seven. My number seven, well, the games I played the most when I was a kid, the teenager, were easily... Fortress America and mm -hmm. Axis and Allies. Okay. For sure. I played them all the time. I loved them. I always wanted that elusive samurai swords. I didn't get that until I went to college. Mm -hmm. um, but I loved the idea of plastic miniatures in the map. And I looked for more games, and I found Avon Hill games and stuff, and they yes. are not the same. No, they're not. As a kid, I was like, okay, I get these, but I just wanted to chuck dice with cool plastic miniatures. And the poster child for that game of the modern age is Nexus Ops. Mm. Man, I would have loved Nexus Ops. It's really a simple game. Yeah. I would have been able to get my neighborhood friends to play this game because yes. it's not that complex. And it looks cool. Everyone would have been like, oh, aliens. <laughs> oh, I finally got the big. It's not a dragon. It's like a, what is what it? What is that thing I don't called? What it's, called. it's like yeah. a firefly dragon type creature. Yeah, 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 yeah. Crystal yeah. dragon or some such yeah, thing. It's yeah, it's such a cool thing. And we would have played this over and over and over and over again. We would have had all the cards memorized. You know, the different mission cards. The funny thing is this, this looks like a game from your teenage era. 
It does. It really it? does it look really that does. way. Yeah, it's got that. Again, I'm I'm now playing the commercial in my head. Yes. Kind of thing. You Very know what much. I mean? I still don't understand why more of these games don't exist. I don't know. There's so few of them, really. That's true. I mean, because most of these know. games, when people make them, are big, grandiose games. Nexus Ops did not pretend to be anything other than, hey, we're just going to play games and... Also, by the way, you should attack because it's good for you. It's a popcorn movie game. Basically. Yeah, it's it so is, good. Right, right. So, love this one. Would have played this one till the cards wore out. <laughs> Nexus Ops. Mm-hmm. All right, my number six is yet another game that has a bit of a dexterity element because, again, that's just stuff I think of has a huge toy so factor. gambling and dexterity was Correct. your thing. Pick up Correct. sticks. Um, this is another game that um, you remember how, as a, as, a, as a kid or a teenager, it seemed like the setting up of the game was almost as much a part of the game as the game itself. Something yes. like Mouse Trap or something like that. Yes. Well, that's, that's younger. Way, but, but yes, yeah, I get what you're this saying. This is one of those types of games. This is... I knew it as Rampage, but Terror in Meeple City. Yes. Oh, that's I true. would have been all <laughs> over this game. What? You're throwing pieces around the board? Yes. You're blowing on things? 100%. You're flicking t pieces around the board? Yes. You're spending as much time setting it up and getting it just the way you want? 100%. Now that kind of annoys me. Back then it wouldn't have annoyed me at all. Sure. Even more so if you had got the version called Rampage, because I'm sure right. you love that game. That game. I love that game We all played that game. Oh, what a great game. I mean, yeah, exactly. If that, it's not a great game. But. If, that, if this had come out, you know, because the copy that, again, that I had was Rampage, mm -hmm. you know, if that had come out at around the time I was playing Rampage, oh my gosh, yeah. I, I have been, like, beside myself, you know what I mean? Um, so, so this one I think is is kind of a no brainer because this is another one that kind of makes you feel like you're young when you're playing it. It you're, does. You're it does. Literally yeah. flicking things around and again, it's you know picking up a, a big dinosaur and dropping it on the board. I mean, come on. And now for me, I'm like, I don't know if it's snooty or snobby or what it is. I'm like, it's so imprecise. I don't like it. Right. It bothers me. Right, right, right. Blah blah blah. But yes, absolutely. As a kid. I don't care about precision. I don't right. care about like it being, you know, mechanically sound. I don't, right. I don't care about that stuff. Being, you know, innovative. Whatever. I'm dropping it's my just... dinosaur on your dinosaur, basically. Yeah, 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 right. You guys must have different groups of friends that I did because I, I mean, well, we would have loved this too, but we would have argued to for hours. But that's part of it too. Overall, the rules. I guess that's you know part I mean? of it. Sure, yeah. that's part of it. Yeah, like, there's no way you breathe. <laughs> You're not touching the sidewalk. <laughs> that kind of thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. There's that too. So, there's my number six Rampage, or if you must, Terror in Meeple City. All right, so my number six is a bit of a stretch. It's one that very much stands out from the rest of these, and it's because of the theme. I think I would have given it several tries because the game is probably complex for my teenage brain, but it's. About theater. It's Shakespeare is the oh, game I picked. Oh, interesting. Okay? okay. And I was already doing theater in high school. Mm -hmm. And and that, so, again, those years, those teenage years, uh, college, uh, I guess, uh, when do you get out of high school? 18? -ish? Yeah, 18 ish. Some yeah, of you, so, yes. Some, some, some <laughs> 17. Uh, <laughs> so, 18, 17, right around that time. Already was into theater, and this is such a good looking game that looks like nothing. That we had around at that time. Sure. Oh, that's true. You know, the artwork on this floors me now, so I can only imagine back then looking at all this, these illustrations, the idea of preparing the rehearsal. I would have been way more into the theme sure. than I am right now. Right now I'm like, yeah, cool, Shakespeare, great. Building a set. But I'm looking at mechanisms right now. Mm -hmm. When I play this game now, I'm looking at mechanical, smart choices, hopefully, <laughs> That's what I'm doing. I feel like back then I would have been like, oh, set dressing. Mm. And like, ooh, you got to put the costume together and yeah. whatever, you know. So again, I feel like it is a bit of a stretch because I do wonder if I'd play it if I would have been like, That's complicated. I don't know what's going on. Oh my gosh. Like, mm -hmm. I bounce off of it because it's too much. I just want to drop dinosaurs on other dinosaurs. <laughs> but it's, I don't know, there was something romantic about the choice that I was like, yeah, that would have been really cool to yeah. play Shakespeare back then while I was actively engaged in classes, theater classes and stuff. So that's my number six, Shakespeare. 
I got a few games on my list that are all about toys. Mm -hmm. Straight um, up toys. Yeah, I wanted to. Me so too. as a kid, I wanted to play with toys and make a game out of it. Yep. And then yes. I would play these Avalon Hill games, or and I played them. I they were always at the thrift store, so I had several of them. And I thought the rules are complex, but I would play it till I figured it out. And like, I hate these pieces. I hate the chits. Mm -hmm. As a kid, that was like, why is a box a tank? That's <laughs> dumb. I want to drive a tank. But I'd rather do even cooler stuff than that. We play with all sorts of things. So my number six is X-Wing. Oh, X-Wing is straight yeah. up yeah. toy factor. 100%. It's not a complex game, really. And just flying around the board, we would have played this so many times. Oh but like, gosh. all right, uh, no, I'm going to redo it now. Let me uh, change up the pilot. That's a good call. And whew, I don't know how much of this I would have been able to afford. Sure. You know, um, Especially with Magic the Gathering also <laughs> taking up your time. I didn't yeah. say I want all ten of these games at the same Any, time. Anyone. I would have. It's ten alternate hi hi realities. That's right, right. There's a few that could overlap. But mm. yes, there's at least five games, or four or five games on my list that if I had them, that was it. Yes, <laughs> I agree. I agree. And in this one, in X-Wing, I, I feel like my rich neighbor friend, I don't know if he's rich. He was spoiled, I yeah. guess, was a better thing. His parents would have bought him everything, and I would have been fine with that. Yeah, because you could I don't play. need to own it. Right. I would have just played it with his stuff. And I'd be like, you could pick the dark side lights. I don't mm -hmm. care. I'll take the other side. And then I would have sat there and thought mm -hmm. over it. I would have yelled to death over the rules interpretations. I was not a pleasant. <laughs> I, was, I was a rules lawyer as a child. But I would have loved this so much. Mm -hmm. And we would have played on the tables. We would have played on the back porch. That's where oh, we played most sure. of our games. The porch yeah. itself. We would have been like, we're not tied to the table. We're going to play on the massive porch on the ground. Yeah, drawn and like a space thing, you know, oh, to, to crazy. put it on. Yeah, yeah, chalk. Yeah. Oh, man, we would have played in the alley. Oh, here mm. comes a car. Move all the... Yeah, right, right. Uh, <laughs> it's I don't a know Star Destroyer! That <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, you laugh, but we... Uh, <laughs> never mind. Um, X-Wing, what a great game for teenagers. All right, this was one of the first games I thought of when, when I approached this list. Uh, it's got dice, okay? Mm -hmm. It's got monsters. Yep. It's got heavy interactivity, chance for, you know, talking smack around the table, and uh, it's pretty simple. My number five is King of Tokyo. Yep. This is uh, definitely one of the first hmm. things I thought of as, as uh, Again, as I thought about this list, I would have been all over this. You know, me and my friends would have been all over this. Picking your monster, you're you're literally just beating each other up with dice. You know, rolling dice, and would, would anybody have gone for the number victory? Absolutely not. No garbage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. I mean, I mean, it would the not. The nerd kids in the neighborhood would have been like, "Oh, points is actually better." We probably would have house ruled it that you couldn't win by. <laughs> yeah, points. yeah, that's you true. Know what I mean, it we would have made yeah, that yeah, a house yeah. rule. You can only win by claws. You know, um, and, and so you know, look, this is just you know, this game I think is kind of almost designed to make you feel like you're that age again. Yes. And and uh, so King of Tokyo, I think, was an easy pick for me for this one because I'd have been all over this as a kid. So there you go. My number five, King of Tokyo. All right, my number five is, uh, again, one that I think is trying very much to appeal to that young mentality. Mm -hmm. It's a big, you know, little characters on a map type of thing, dungeon crawly, but it's sci-fi, it's space. It's all kinds of cool artwork and, and funky powers. Starcadia Quest. Oh, wow, yeah. And again, yeah, Starcadia I Quest I can see that. is right now, for me, kind of gets muscled out by other miniatures games mm -hmm. that are more grown up. They're mm -hmm. tighter rules. They're whatever, whatever. Starcadia Quest would have been just straight up dumb, <laughs> blast him away fun. Yep, yep. Chuck some dice. Shoot that dude. Walk out there. Look at that guy. Looks like Blade with his little uh, <laughs> cool uh, hair and a couple of a couple of swords there. Yeah, just all that stuff would have. Again, the lack of pretentiousness. Yes. Is I think a lot of what my picks are about. This idea of I know so many things that immediately I play something and I go, that just like you explained a rule. It reminded me of three other games. Yes. And you know, and then I realized I like all three of those more mm. than this. <laughs> you don't get that with this, right. you know. So. Yeah, this would have been just fun. Running around, the weird kind of the humor in it mm -hmm. also oh, for sure. lends to that sort of, hey, calm down, it's a toy with rules, don't take it too seriously. This could be a cartoon. You know what I yeah. mean? It could have easily made a cartoon show. On Saturday Starcadia. morning, Starcadia class. 100%, Starting right? the voices of... Uh, 
in the in in the nineties. Uh, Could have had Casey Kasem, the guy who did Shaggy, and oh, who's the guy who did Will Scarlet and Brown for the Thieves? Um, <laughs> sorry, I, forget. I don't know. Who Kevin that is. Bacon, no, not Kevin Bacon, but no. um, Sharp Nose. Uh, okay, yeah. it don't matter. Uh, we don't have a live chat Mike on this Delizio? one. Christopher <laughs> Guest. <laughs> no. Okay. I'll figure it out soon yeah, enough. Yeah. No. Um, okay. That's a good call. Yeah. Good. Cho good choice. Thank you. Appreciate that. My number five. Yeah. Let's go. All right. I I said earlier I don't know what I would have thought about cooperative games, and I think I would have enjoyed them. This is a cooperative game, but I know that I would have played this one solo, okay. a lot because I would have sat there and made deck after deck after deck after combination. Because the deck building thing still blows my mind now. Yep. And this is a deck building game I would have played as a teenager, and that is Marvel Legendary. Okay. Marvel Ooh, Legendary. Yeah. I would have said every time a new set would have come out, I would have been like, okay, we now have a set of, I got, you know, oh, this set has Deadpool. Okay, I'm now going to combine Deadpool with every character in the original <laughs> one. Right, right. Against, I would have... You know, they say there's billions of combinations. I would have played thousands of them. Mm -hmm. I really would have. I've been like, well, we haven't tried this setup yet. Let's try this one here. Let's try this. Let's find the optimal way to crush here. Oh, I'm getting pretty good at the game. I'll play on this hard level, which mm -hmm. I don't do now. Now right, I'm like, right. ah, just let me play. Yep. And I would have tried so much with this. I would have probably dragged my brothers and sisters to play this, and I would have played for them. I would have told him what to buy. Him. Sure, sure, sure. I didn't say it was a pleasant. Uh, <laughs> you said you, you said specifically said you weren't. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Marvel Legendary, lots of fun. I the Marvel thing. I mean, I've liked superheroes my whole life, so that doesn't hurt. But the combination is this one are endless. Mm. So that's my number five. My number four is also a cooperative game. And what do you know? There's a dexterity element to it, too. I, I, I realize that this is a dexterity-heavy game. That's interesting. But I think, as a teenager, those are the types of things that I... It just... I don't know if that appealed to me. The Did you know, like, after element. you made the list, you then conscientiously were like, huh, I put a lot of dexterity on I there. I did, and I thought, do I need to change it? I said, no. I, I, I decided not to because yeah. I was like, you know, I'm just going to go with instead what I, you know, uh, what first came to me. And, and so just like... Rampage, you know, evoked memories of that game. Flip Ships is a game that oh, good choice, would have Mike. reminded me of Space Invaders, right? And you oh, are... Oh, that's a great You pick. know, the, 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 the simple rules. And not only you're, you're flicking your, your ships literally at these ships coming down, but that mothership, oh my God. We would have loved. I mean, we, I always, because I think I also think of you know playing these with my friends. You right, know what I mean? Right, that must have um, been nice. Yeah, it must have been nice, right? Have friends? You could play yeah. this one solo too, though, Z. So you're you're oh, good. good. I'm back. You're I'm good. back here. I don't know that this would be fun solo. Yeah, it's better with friends. It's better with with others. Shut up, you, adult. <laughs> <laughs> but but man, this this game, I would you you know you'd have just perfected it, right? You'd have, you'd have sat there with that thing and you'd have perfected your 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 flicking. Uh, you know, uh, what's the word I'm thinking about? Your, your technique. Technique, thank you. I was thinking routine. Your flipping technique. And I probably would have just spent an hour getting good at getting into that mothership. You know what I mean? Right. Uh, so this is a game that, I, that, again, I think... You're really heavy on dexterity. Man. I am. That's what we were just talking about. I don't know. I think those years, that was especially appealing to me. You know, just physically interacting you with... You lose what, money at, like, Chuck E. Cheese and stuff? <laughs> Um, at the fair, on the did, claw? like at the fair games, I, did you like not? Were you not allowed to touch them? No, let's just say that Carnies and I didn't always see eye to eye. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no friendship. I don't know <laughs> what. <laughs> that is the best <laughs> quote. <laughs> Carnies and I didn't always see eye to eye. Okay, I, I got the name. It's Christian Slater. So I was oh, about. Christian Slater. Oh, you could have just hired Jack Nicholson. They're the same person. All right, my number four. Yeah, but Christian Slater has that young. He youthful, does have the young. The he young could voice. be the star. Star Candy Quest of Cartoon. He yeah, could be. The yeah. kind of, the, 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 I told you I'd find it. The more kind of like, uh, you know, cocky characters. Yeah. Like, yeah. Hey, guys. Yeah, yeah doing yeah. the whole, yeah, he could have mm -hmm. done that. Okay. Or Michael J. Fox, too. Michael J. Fox also would have been good. Choice. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, my number four is one that, again, right now, as an adult, I have kind of poo-pooed a little bit. But it is very innovative, and I consider it to be innovative now. And I think, again, as a teenager, ooh, I would have been all over this game finding all sorts of funky combinations. Uh, I already had a Western-themed game mm -hmm. on my list. I like that theme. Sure. I did as a teenager. This is 3,000 Scoundrels. 
Oh my goodness! Interesting. Three thousand scoundrels. Interesting. I thought you were going to say Dice Town. No, three thousand. Dice Town is more complex than it this. Is. It I is. Think. Three thousand scoundrels has sci-fi. Eh, I would have. I would have found it in there as a teenager. <laughs> um, Western sci-fi thing going on. Mm -hmm. The main thing that bothers me now as an adult about this game is the end game. I find the scoring to be kind of like, but mm -hmm. you know. I don't think I would have had that problem. You wouldn't problem. have cared, yeah. You wouldn't have cared. I wouldn't have had that issue. Mm -hmm. It would have been all about, oh, this is a cool, like, this is a guy who has a, you know, you put the cards together, oh transparencies. That would, have been, that would have been amazing. That would have been mind-blowing yes. stuff, man. It kind of is now. Mm -hmm. I mean, but back then, I wouldn't have seen any of the, what I consider anyway, to be flaws now. Yeah. yeah. I would have just loved the taking the characters and their abilities and, Hoarding cash and guessing as to what the other players did, messing with each other, robbing the bank or whatever mm -hmm. it is you're doing. All of that stuff would have just been gold. Yeah. And then the look of the game, the interesting, innovative parts of the game. Yeah, it would have been all over this game. So yeah. for me, my four, 3,000 scoundrels. I don't think... Teenage Tom Vassalo. I would have been excited about that. I would have played it and I'd have been like, I would have been looking for more excitement. Yeah? It's not enough excitement for Teenage Tom Vassal. Mm. Teenage Tom Vassal has a short attention He's span. He's a thrill seeker, that Teenage Tom He also Tom was Vassal. not very pleasant. I'm not heard <laughs> that. Apparently not. <laughs> uh, it wasn't the game with I, I, I don't know. All right, my number four is the newest game on my list, and it's the first one I thought of just because I played it so recently. I'm going to finish this game. It's going to take me years. This one? I would have. But you yeah, remember, I'm kind of my, my mind is blown that you'd put this on here. I don't really care. Would you been able to handle the rules back Odyssey. then? You think? Yes. Okay. You okay. were playing like Avalon. I'm Hill telling games you, I was stuff. playing Avalon Hill games. Yeah. The I rules. Wasn't. In I fact, wasn't. I would have. I would have been like, bring the rules. Yeah, you were into that stuff. I would have wanted more rules. I this was not. huge game that would have taken me a long time. I would have woke up in the morning, eaten breakfast. On a summer day, mm -hmm. going back yeah, into the room. Go. There we go. <laughs> I have to clarify summer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I would, Mom. All right. Summer. I would have played this all day. Yeah. I would have come down for meals and done nothing else. I would have kept playing. My parents would have forced me to go outside. <laughs> you know, because I would have been so caught up in this, I would have just played it over and over again. I know I would. Yeah. I would have loved this. I mean, there's a lot of games that actually could fit in this category. Sure. This one's kind of the newest one, but it's it's really, I mean, it's drawing me now. Sure. Adult on Basil, but those rules, 80-page rule book, I would have been like, Psh, that's all? Come on. Really? I I didn't have a lot of friends, okay? I, I loved reading rule books. What about that rich kid? Well, I had him. <laughs> yeah, but see, I would have been... So, I didn't have the money that my friends did. Right. But I was smarter than all of them, mm -hmm. at least in my head. I don't know. Wow. And I learned all the <laughs> games, so they would come over and I'd be like, this is how you play. Mm -hmm. Very different than I am today. Sure. Um, yeah. yeah. Shut up. Tom okay. was very free with letting anybody have the rule book as a teenager. Yeah? yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even let you touch the rule book. I'd be like, these are the rules. This is what it is. Mm -hmm. Even though you'd make up some rules, probably. <laughs> No, no, I was very much a now, rule book so. stickler. He was also John Kennedy as a teenager. <laughs> this this is how is, you play the game. I am not making up the rules. <laughs> I this though the story involved, the kind of the role playing. I would have played this multiple times. Sure, sure. Not just once. <laughs> I would have the time to do it. I don't yeah. know, man. I don't know. I did not. I haven't played this. To be fair, I've seen yeah. it. I've. I would have run away screaming so much. And maybe, like maybe you're right. Maybe you would have just. Really, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, Dug in, enjoy, the, crunchy. Dedicated yourself, yes. I guess, to it. But I would have. I, I know it because I was just reading. I was reading. I was writing computer programs for fun. Okay. You know, okay. this. You I would have rather done nerd. that. I'm not mm -hmm. arguing that I was a nerd. Every game on my list. That's what I said. Yeah. So you were a huge nerd. <laughs> no, I was a very skinny nerd. Um, nerd. Every game on my list is very nerdy, with the exception of maybe Formula D. The rest mm -hmm. are that way because that's what I would want to play. All right. I like so it. I like that's it. That's my number four. That's fair. All right. All right. My All number right. three Kingdom is... Kingdom Death Monster. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. King... <laughs> no. Um, my number three is... 
not similar to Tom, other than the extent that it is a cooperative Marvel game. It's just a very different one. Is it Marvel United? Marvel United would be my number three. Yeah, this is I becoming mean, your your uh, game look, for every list. I'm telling you, this is that's the that's the danger is that this is a game that does fit a lot of different lists. It does. I'm sorry, honestly, it really does. It really, yeah. really does. And I again, I almost like, do I take it off of the list because I've had it on recent lists? No. As a teenager, I'd have been over the moon. Yeah, with I this. agree. I would and have this been is over something the moon. That could have been played like without the again the heavy lifting of yes. something like Aeon Trespass and like the daunting almost right. nature of that for me. I'm only right. speaking for me. This is playable, right? Yes. This is easy to get to. This would have been at Toys R Us or KB Toys, yes. KB and there Toys would have been commercials for it on every Saturday morning cartoon, you know, morning. Yeah, uh, I'd have been like all over this, you know, and it and it's a low barrier to entry, cost and rules and. I, I, gosh, I'd have been, I just, I would have been in heaven with this game yeah, as, I as agree. a teenager. So, you know, yes, it's been on a lot of lists lately, but it, it's, it fits this list for sure. I agree. I agree. Um, in fact, I agree so much. <laughs> it's my number three. Ah, there we go. It? There we go. One hundred percent. Okay. <laughs> that is called the crossover. Okay. Mm -hmm, that's Powers a crossover. United. We that's need a, to get like a uh, special effects crossover uh, thing. We do. Yes. Uh, like a repulsor beam. It should sound like a uh, a goat bleating. No, that's, what? A, that's a that's, that's a sheep, terrible, right? that's no? a terrible crossover. I like effect. it. I like the the bleating goat. I think not bleeding. This is one of those times we're going to pull the uh, veto. Okay. No, darn it. <laughs> All right. Marvel United. Uh, everything Mike <laughs> said. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I would have been all over this. Mm -hmm. The 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 cartoony nature. The again not taking itself super seriously. If yep. that's either because that the rules are light. Relatively, mm -hmm. or because of the cartoony look of everything, yes. right? It's very welcoming. It's not scary. It's not a game that I look at and I go, "I don't think that's for me." You know, I don't think I can right. handle whatever this big giant epic thing is. This one is disarming in that way. So, and, and while while this chibi style art now is it's very divisive, but it's also kind of ubiquitous. You see it everywhere. Sure. Back then, when I was a teenager, seeing superheroes that I'm familiar with in a way that they're still recognizable but different would yeah, have also yeah. blown my mind. Yeah, I think it would have been cool. Just I like, like Chibis now, but yeah, I agree. Yeah. I don't like. know what I would have thought about Chibis as a kid. I don't you would have loved it. I would have thought it was very cool. You would have been like, they got big brains. <laughs> 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 well, this is not brain. a three-way crossover. My three is going to trump both of these. No, I disagree. Um, again, I like toys, and I wish as a kid that you could play with games with Lego. You, mm. you can't. But I love the idea of building Lego castles sure, and stuff sure. and playing games. Okay. This is all about, I would have spent long periods of time just setting this game up. Mm -hmm. oh. And that's Heroescape. Yep. Okay. Oh, man. Heroescape. Also, with a Marvel set, so I could have done that, too. This is close. How far, how far past teenage years was yeah. it? I don't know. When, when did Heroescape come out? Oh, four? Tom, is that right? Yeah, something around there. Oh, three, oh, four, oh, five, something okay. like that. I was <coughs> I was in my twenties at okay, that point. Okay. Well, no, I was I was. It wasn't like gotcha. Yeah, it question. wasn't that much. It, it was, was a real not, question. I didn't no, know. I, I wanted to get you. I wanted you to make a huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Did you make that? Oh, that's amazing. Actually, um, I was almost thirty. I think. Anyway, um, yeah. This I did not make. Uh, I've made something that big before. Yeah. Because it's just so much fun, and I would have. I would have again. My too. my mom would have been. She would have been okay with this game. I think just because she'd been like, "Oh, you're building something fun. Yeah, I'm mm. building, building. Now let's roll dice and play <laughs> with right. all the different stuff." And I would have. My dad would have been like, "I'll just buy you the historical stuff," and he would have bought me the Revolutionary War soldiers and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. I would have got grandma to buy me a dragon. <laughs> you know, and then I would. Right. Oh man, the anachronistic thing. I love that. You mm -hmm. know, the, the so much fun. I'm like, oh, I could take a dragon. Against robots? Yeah, yeah. Are you yes. kidding me? Right. That's amazing. I know many of you watching have had the joy of playing this as a teenager. Yeah. That's awesome. I wish I did. I'm sad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you looking? I wish I did. I'm sad. Why are you laughing <laughs> at my <laughs> sadness? I'm not. I just, you know, the way you said that. I'm yeah. sorry. It's humorous to me. We're taking joy in your suffering, Tom. They wish it was a word for that. <laughs> Freuden, Freuden, Freuden. Uh, my number two is, this is the one that I, I struggled the most with because... And it's number two? Yeah, because just because I think that if I... if Maybe I wasn't giving... Maybe I'm not now giving myself enough credit as a teenager for what I could have handled rules-wise. Okay. So this is the only thing. 
But for this type of a game, it's not very rules heavy. Okay. It's component heavy, right? And so that could be a little intimidating. My number two is Cthulhu Death May Die. I would yeah. have loved this game as a teenager if I could have handled the rule set. Did you know about Cthulhu when you were a teenager? Um, I didn't hear about it till way after. Yeah, I was, I was an definitely adult. an adult at that point. So that's the other thing. It wasn't as it wasn't it wasn't as much, but I think I had read some Lovecraft at, at that point. Really? If you can read Lovecraft, you can play this game. Yeah, yeah, I think I had read Lovecraft as a teenager. <laughs> no, I, I think reading Lovecraft's harder than a rule. No, no, they had, true. And if they like, had published this in the eighties or nineties, they would have put that on the cover. Yeah, yeah. That's if true. you can read Lovecraft, right. you can play this. That's game. right. <laughs> like I was, yeah, like I, I would read it like an anthology stuff with like Edgar Allan Poe stuff. Yeah, and, you know, yeah. I, I would read anthologies with with Lovecraft stories in it, so I was familiar yeah. with the the kind of the mythos. And just the the look of this game, and the idea of you know these characters that you're that you're going up, and the and the the pulpy nature of it, I think would have been very appealing to me. Really, it would have had kind of that slightly. Am I allowed to be playing this type of a thing going okay. on? That's true. Okay. You play this, yeah. like, ah. this is dark. It's a dark looking. It's, it's a dark looking game, but it is also kind of stupid and cartoony, right? It is. It's not it is. really dark. It's very pulpy. You know what yes. I mean? And so I think that. It would have been that thing of like, oh, I'm feeling it's a little dangerous to play this, but I'm probably okay. I don't think mom would get mad, really, type of a thing. Um, I just, this would not make the door frame of my house. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> there would yeah. be a cross thrown at this. Yes. <laughs> so, anyway, no. Uh, again, I know this is a little bit, I, I was right on the edge, but I, I went with it. Cthulhu, death may die. Well, my number two pick is very similar to your number two pick, actually, Mike. Okay. Cthulhu I was not aware of, so yeah. that wouldn't have done it. Zombicide? Um, it's not Zombicide. It's something that, again, gets better if I go back in time. Mm -hmm. Masters of the Universe, man. Oh, wow. The newest pick. That is actually list. really... This would have been amazing as a teenager. Amazing! <laughs> Are you kidding me? Because it would have been even more relevant then. I was mm -hmm. more, you know, it was closer to when I was watching this right, stuff. Right, right, right. And it's, again, the rules in this one, I think, are fairly straightforward. I would mm -hmm. say about as complex, if not slightly easier than Death May Die. Not dark, right? Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't have that thing. And it's all the toy factor, man, yeah. with the walls and the boulders and the everybody, all the ridiculous characters. Yeah, this would have been an absolute blast mm -hmm. to play as a teenager. Yeah, again, this is a good that, call. This is a good call. It's got that, you know, that theme, the the the... The minis, the whole, the whole shebang. This is very much like Cthulhu Death May Die, but kind of my pick for that. Uh, Masters of the Universe. You're, yeah. I mean, really, you are. It's like you said, you're playing with toys yeah. with a rule set. I mean, this is what you're doing. Yeah. You know yeah, I mean? yeah. Yeah. That's a good. This choice. is a little like more a scripted. Playing with toys is what a lot of these games are. Right. Right. Pretty much. I mean, you'd make up your own rules anyway yeah, when you were playing true. the toys. Yeah. Like, yeah. Make reasons for this guy right. fell. Oh, he mm. missed. He shot at this guy, but missed. Or yeah. Whatever. Right. So they just yeah they they <laughs> they solidify those things for you. That's correct. But yeah, that's my pick. Number two, Masters of the Universe. All right, my number two mixes my love for toys, but also the the dudes on a map genre. Okay. I already mentioned that's Nexus. Three Ops. dudes on a map uh, games then for yeah. for the number two here. That's yeah, true. this one is more of the grandiose nature, like Axis and Allies in Fortress America, and this has a lot more rules. But I don't care. I would have loved it because of the monsters and uh, many different things it lets me do, and that's Lords of Hellas. Oh, Lords of Hell, oh, I would have been like, I thought you yes. were going to say battle lore. Okay. You know, I, I like battle lore, actually, but I would have been, if you if the two were on the table, the, the Greek mythology, which With even as a kid, I like that. <laughs> also the sci-fi, but then if you're like, you go on quests, I'm in. Mm -hmm. I'm in. Yeah. I can go on quests and have dudes in the map. I just talked about um, a game that I played 20 years ago now called Quest for the Dragon Lords, which I thought was... <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. I gave it a much better review at the time 20 years ago because the idea of it having quests and fighting on a map was astounding to me. It has not aged well. Mm -hmm. This game, though, is newer and really is cool. And mm -hmm. I, man, the whole idea of putting things. And I, I also, this one has a bit more of a yeah feel to it. Even though today, I, if you compare this to Kemet, sure. I'd rather have Kemet. Sure. But as a kid, I think I would have been kind of like, ah, there's worker placement yeah, and there's no. card play. Chem is yeah, more mechanically little, sound. Yeah, yeah, it's a little more serious. It's yes. a little more like, hmm, check. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, more right. than this, anyway. Yeah, I'm not yeah. saying it's like that. Sure, but, yeah. and I think I would have been like, oh, but this one, <clears throat> oh, I can get upgrades and mm. swords. <laughs> I would have just been all over this one. Yeah. So my number two, 
Lord's Palace. <laughs>、right. I'm very curious about these number ones, I guys. I took a huge risk with number one. You、Why、did? I, I、really、risk. Did. No, it's not, it's not risk. I did play Risk as a kid.、Um, I, took, legacy. I took a risk with number one for two reasons. Number one, it's a re implementation of a game that was around when I was a teenager. <gasps> And number two, it utilizes technology that very much did not exist when I was、oh, a well, teenager. Oh, well, you just narrowed that. I was like, well, it's Fireball and a Return to Dark Tower. It's Return to Dark Tower. <laughs> so. Can I get away with this because the technology no. didn't exist back then? No. no, no, you can get away with this because the game mechanisms had not advanced to that point. That's true, yeah, so yeah, yeah. If we're allowing that anachronism, we can allow this. Yeah, that, I, I mean, it's just like, look, allow this. look at this. <laughs> look, look, look at this, right? This is basically like, I, are you kidding me? As a teenager, I, I, I'm like Tom, I envy teenagers today. That, I know. Y'all are so lucky. You know what I mean? That that they get lucky it, punks, right? Can you imagine as a teenager being presented with this thing? Oh my God! I、And、would just be right. Well, the, yeah, you're, <laughs> you're, you're like put you're, the game away. Yeah, yeah, What、right. is this? He's not, What? Letting, he's not letting me off the hook easily. But the, just this idea of 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 this big huge toy factor. This incredible and and this version of Dark Tower with the, the cooperative nature and everything else and the and it's just a, it's a better game too quite honestly than the original Dark Tower. There's no question about that. So I don't know. This was the one that I was like when you told me this list. I was like, okay, how could it not be this? I mean, I was never able to afford Dark Tower as a teenager. I did remember I did get a play. As we are assuming we are teenagers with a lot more. Right,、money. right. I yes, did get、yes. a play of Friends, and I thought it was、Rich、great. Rich friend. Yes, I did think. It was, I think it was the same. Same guy.、Time. You guys live yeah, near that, each other. That's right. <laughs>、um, and I thought it was great, but I mean, this is to me, you know, gosh, again, I envy teenagers today that get. Exposed to Return to Dark Kids Tower. Kids these days. I yeah, tell you what, you're yeah. lucky. You are lucky. Back in my day, we had to play Monopoly uphill both That's ways. Right. That's right. My、right, number one, Return to Dark Tower. This is kind of all of the things that you know. When I think back of teenage years that were exciting, it's all kind of evoked right there. Okay, you know I, mean? I like、This、that. This adventure, the 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 toy factor, the all of that is there. Yeah. No, that's a good pick. I mean, yes, it's a little whatever the tech, but yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that draw. I hope you're just fireball on because that'd be that'd、hilarious. be great. That no, my number one、good. is、um, a cooperative game, and it's a game that I very much enjoy now.、Mm-hmm. But I think again, I would have really, really enjoyed as a teenager as well. The pirate、uh, one on the seas and the fires. Oh no, that's a good call. But no, it's a Star Wars game. The new pandemic one. The new pandemic、wow. one. Star Wars: The Clone Wars. I think I would have really liked as a teenager. It also would have spoiled future films for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Who are these people? <laughs> Who's this? Because <laughs> it would have been. Let me think. Oh, so he's getting you back with the iPad. I know, right? The iPad. I'm trying to think. Like, I would have been. This would have been. Early 2000s or late 90s,、mm-hmm. which is when Episode One came out in '99. That's correct.、Mm-hmm. Episode Two, a couple years after that, I、yeah. don't know. So right around that time is really most of where we saw this. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually thought about this. I'm like, wait, <laughs> no, I think I'm okay. Like it's about that it's time. It's close, close enough. enough. Yeah, it's yeah, close yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. So again, imagine like that, those movies now, especially we、yeah. look at them, many people, and they go, oh, fooey, garbage.、Nah. How dare you ruin, you know, my my. Childhood. No. Then, if I'd just gone and seen episode one or episode two、mm-hmm. or whatever, and then I come home and I I, I get this. Oh yeah, my yeah. goodness! I yeah, get to、yeah. play these characters. Right. I get to cooperate with each other against the droids against、mm-hmm. Darth Maul. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. You yeah, know, yeah. I would have been all over this. I'm very much cooled on Star Wars overall, but around this time, except Mandalorian. And those、mm-hmm. movies. Yeah, that Mandalorian is great. And and those movies coming out. Yeah, I would have been. All over this game. So, Star Wars: The Clone Wars is my number one. For me, that game would have been Star Wars: Queen's Gambit. Sure. Because、yeah. my <laughs> mind, I saw that on a. I was heading towards Korea as an adult, and I saw that, and I was like, "Wow, I want that so much!" It just looked amazing. Is that your did number you get one? Get it? I did. I did. Is your number one Queen's Gambit? No, my number <laughs> one is based a hundred percent. This would be the game I would like the most as a teenager because I know the game that I did like the most as a teenager、okay. was Hero Quest. Okay. And Hero Quest came with these ten missions, and you could make up more. And I did. I made up all kinds of stuff for my friends. I was a dungeon master. They came through. 
So, I mean, I probably I wish I would have played D&D as a teenager, but that did exist. I just... It, it was like off in the fringes. Gloomhaven? So it's a dungeon crawl, but it's not Gloomhaven because I think, as a teenager, I would have been impressed with Gloomhaven. Yeah. But there's no dice. Well, and I oh, want to okay. chuck dice. Yeah, sure. So for me, the number one would be Descent 2nd Edition. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And while this is not my favorite dungeon <coughs> crawl now, that's Massive Darkness. Mm -hmm. Two. Massive Darkness 2, you're right. Massive mm -hmm. Darkness 2. Massive Darkness wouldn't have been enough for me because mm -hmm. Massive Darkness is not a campaign. Right. And while today I go, I'm I would prefer <laughs> fewer campaigns, yes. as a kid I would have been like, this campaign is like 100 hours? Yes! Mm -hmm. I can oh link my word! Them. I can link them together? Right, yeah, right, right. Well, I would have, we would have played this every week. That's a, a, with me and the neighbors. They, I would have brought this yeah. out. They would have come out. I would have been the overlord. They would have played. I would, we, we would have had a blast. Yeah. All these plastic miniatures over and over again. This Hero Quest, what? This is what we wanted. Mm -hmm. Because Hero Quest was fun, but you're like, it's a skeleton. Again. <laughs> right, you know, right, you yes, have the yes. same. Enemies. There was, I think, there's like four enemies in the basic yeah. game, or five, or whatever. And then some of the expansions for Hero Quest added more of the same enemy. They're like, they, one of the expansions was like the undead. I was like, they're in the base game. Yeah, you like skeleton? Here's here's some more. Yeah, and that's fine, I suppose. But this really shakes things up. It's really fun, and I think the storyline would have done really well. Yeah. Yes. All right, folks. Those are our ten games we wish were around when we were a teenager. Let us know what you would have liked in the comments because that, this is. We I know you said this was hard, once. but I think this is like an interesting <laughs> topic to comprehend. It is. Yeah. It, it was just tricky to come up with yeah. the why. Definitely you know? interesting. I just, yeah, I, I really I struggled. think you guys both had much stronger lists than I did. Um, I don't know. It's very interesting. You're yeah. right. And so maybe, yeah, listening to both of your lists was more interesting to mm. me than necessarily coming up with mine. But, you know. I, but I, this is something I think about now. A new game comes out, I think. Yeah. What would I have thought about this as a teenager? Because right. sometimes you got to think about that as these games come out. Like, eh, but teenage. I mean, even Kickstarter bloat. Okay, we sure, talked about that. Sure. A teenager mind would have been like, that's how many boxes Simon just sent? This is like it. Christmas for three years straight. Well, and speaking to what Z has mentioned multiple times on this list, too, is that we <laughs> oftentimes, as reviewers, will, when a game comes out, we'll ask, who are they making this game for? You know, because it won't be for us. Right, right, right. But, you know, how often are we thinking... Is this for teenage us, though? You know what I mean? Yeah, sure. That's an important fair, thing though, to ask. Yeah, yeah. Even though there is a barrier, we just said it's lucky to be teenagers sure. these days. They don't have access to a lot of these Correct. games. you got to go to Kickstarter, back it. You're yes, not a teenager by the time true. you get it. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're in your you know 30s. I mean? That's very true. You that's work right. at the uh, Social Security office. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, anyway, lots of fun, folks. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. And, yes, we were teenagers once. Long time ago. Mm.